um, welcome to, to our conversation today, um, brought to you by UNCDF and Startup Uganda. And as part of the theme for uh, Women's Day, we are looking to um, discuss about the confluence of um, gender equality in the context of uh, climate change and especially nowadays with the growing use of digital technologies. And so with me is a wonderful team of uh, female leaders who are going to be sharing some of the experiences and the role their organization is contributing towards this cause. And um, starting with uh, uh, Juliet Grace uh, Luede, uh, we can start with the, off with the introductions and then we will get into the discussion. Um, yeah. Good morning, Juliet. Good morning, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Juliet Chris, with the Trigist. I am the Eastern Africa Regional Coordinator for the African Youth Initiative on Climate Change. What that means is I get to work with 19 countries, not only Uganda, but 19 countries within the Eastern region. Thank you. Thank you, Juliet. Grace. And uh, next to Juliet, we have uh, Barbara. Birungi um, Mutawazi. Barbara, I'd like to know more about you, what you're doing. Yeah, my name is Barbara Birungi Mutawazi. I'm a co-founder and managing director of Women in Technology Uganda. And our role is to support women uh, by closing the technological gender gap so that we can improve the lives of women and girls across Uganda. Thank you, Barbara. And not least, we have Alain Arunaite. Hello, Alain. Hi, hi Ronald, how are you? Uh, my name is Alan Arinitwe, I'm a Programs uh, Director with Hive Collab. Hive Collab um, is one of those uh, uh, organizations that have been around for the last 10 years, uh, plus 10 plus years, and um, we are about scaling ideas with positive social impact. We start putting entrepreneurs across the country, in Mara, in uh, Kampala, and also in the northern region in Lira, we have a base there. So, we're just about supporting entrepreneurs and, and one of the things that we, uh, what some of the areas that we support are um, in agri-tech, in med-tech, uh, in gov-tech, mm. um, uh, we also support in edu-tech, so we're just around, those are the thematic areas that we support yeah. and we're really excited to be part of this show. Thank you, and those are areas that are very pertinent for development like ag-tech, and in fact, uh, maybe that could be a place we start because uh, one of the um, IPCC reports that came out last year on climate change was essentially pointing to a future where, for example, uh, droughts are longer, rainfall patterns are more unpredictable, mm -hmm. and even rainfall amounts are um, destructive amazing. sometimes. So I think that ag tech or agriculture may be a good place to start because we know in Uganda, uh, close to 80% of the population is, in, is engaged in agriculture mm -hmm. and, and within that population, majority women, um, so some statistics show that 88% are women and then 78 men. So you see that any changes in the climate disproportionately you know, affect women. So um, Juliet Grace, that would be a nice place to learn about African uh, Youth Initiative on Climate Change. What, um, what is it about and, and what, what are some of the initiatives you're undertaking to alleviate some of these uh, challenges, especially for women? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Arnold. Uh, so the African Youth Initiative on Climate Change is currently in 42 African countries. How the movement started is we are at UNEP, that's in Nairobi, for a conference for the United Nations Development Assembly. And representation of African young people was really low. Like literally, you could see, you could tell the black people in the room where, who the black young people in the room where. So we decided to organize ourselves and form a movement that allows us to collectively share experiences and our knowledge as African young people, so that even our voices get added onto the voices of the young people from the global south who are able to afford the plane tickets, are able to also come down and attend such meetings. And with that, so our key areas of focus are, like I mentioned, mentioned agribusiness. In as much as women are in this space, even young people are actually innovating in this space, so how do we support the young people in the agribusiness space to actually also be accounted for, but then also have their innovations showcased? 
uh, the other thematic area that we work on is advocacy. Yes, IPCC report is very scientific, but how do we break down the language of the IPCC report so that even the farmers at the grassroots understand what that report, the mm. science yeah. there are in. Yeah. Uh, the other area is tree planting and ecological. <laughs> Most times when people hear activism, they're thinking, oh, those guys are planting trees. But then also with tree planting, mm -hmm. we have to be very intentional about the kind of trees that we plant. Mm -hmm. Not plant a tree for the sake of planting, trying to cover up space. Okay. But are they carbon absorbers? Mm -hmm. um, oh, do they wow. produce food at the same time? Mm -hmm. Is Barbara able to go to her tree and pick her fruit and feed her family yeah. at the end of the day? What are the benefits of these trees that yeah. we are planting? So we always wow. encourage, even when you're planting trees, what kind of trees are you going to plant? Recycling, there's a lot of plastic waste mm -hmm. in our environment and in our communities. Yeah. But what are we doing about it? So we encourage encourage a lot of recycling, mm -hmm. renewable energy is just saying no cutting down of trees, but my mother is just to firewood and mm. charcoal. Yeah. So how do I encourage her to transition from the firewood and the charcoal to yeah. briquettes say gas? Mm. But can she even afford gas? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's an alternative which is briquettes, which is more affordable than gas. Yes. So how do I encourage that transition? Yeah. So that's also yeah. another thematic area that you work it's, in. And it's nice that you're touching on the the cooking part because that's yeah, yeah. that's quite energy intense. Yeah. And if you only focus, for example, on, on um, the production of more oxygen with tree planting, how about this aspect of cooking and all that? So it's interesting that there's also this area where you're working on cooking fuel. Yeah. yeah. But then also with all this, we are looking at action for empowerment because mm -hmm. it's easy for me to tell you about climate change yeah. and how it's real and how it's in our space. But am I educating you about it? Yeah. Because yeah. with climate action for empowerment, that means I'll teach about climate change, uh -huh. I'll teach about renewable energies, yeah. I'll teach about all these other alternatives. So uh -huh. I empower you to be able to take action at the same time to also change uh, and related to that, I'm curious, how do you, um, as African, you know, as the initiative for youth on, on um, climate change, how do you get this message across? Like it's very hard, especially nowadays with COVID and all that, mm -hmm. but how do you, do you do some trainings? Do you have some field activities? How do women access some of this knowledge about, for example, this variety of tree, maybe like avocado or mangoes, maybe more beneficial for planting. Yeah. So like I said, we are in 42 African countries. Mm -hmm. That means we have to connect. And I can't be flying to Nairobi yeah, every yeah, now and yeah, then. That's yeah. a lot of carbon I'm emitting every time I take that flight. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been able to embrace uh, working online mm -hmm. digitally. So even before COVID for us, Zoom was our office. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we would always meet online just to share what we are doing in our mm -hmm. But then we also have focal points. Yeah. We have a Ugandan focal point whose work is really to rally the Ugandan youth and the Ugandan communities to yeah. work together. Yeah. So we go into communities mm -hmm. and do a lot of capacity building on the different thematic areas. Which are some of these communities like in Uganda? So we work mostly with university students, okay. uh, organize youth led organizations, yeah. but then also now we've been also able to pivot into the Ministry of Water and Environment mm -hmm. and then with development partners because they are the decision makers of that ones that hold yeah, the that land. <laughs> yes, so we've been able to pivot into the policy aspect of yeah. how do we also as young people influence for exactly. policy, future yeah. policy changes. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. you've embraced the young part in the organization, <laughs> the African youth, yes. <laughs> youth component. And, and so you touched, which is, uh, makes me think about some of the work High Collab is doing. Yeah. And I would like to ask Alan about that. You touched on the cycle on, on reducing waste mm -hmm. and having a cyclical like um, uh, processing within the organization where waste is converted maybe to some form of value or other products. And, uh, and recently I, I, I heard about some of the work with Hive Collab is doing around in, in, in investing in mm -hmm. businesses that can prove a, you know, a, it's such a circular, cycle. Uh, yeah, so beside, in addition, you know, maybe you could also describe what are, are some of the initiatives you're doing, especially around uh, the area of, of, of digital and mm -hmm. and agriculture. Um, yes. So, uh, so Hive Collab has a partnership um, with uh, some organizations, uh, ITEA Foundation, and we have also Offarms and Bob Inc. And this is really um, touching. Um, Uganda, uh, the heart of Uganda is really food, yeah, it's mm -hmm. agriculture. Because now we found out that in Uganda, um, 
everybody's okay like we said 80 percent is really about agriculture but most of the food that we produce when it goes to the market um today barbara will be selling tomatoes but in the evening they'll have gone bad maybe because nobody actually picked them up or even mm. someone step, stepped on them or they are those not so perfect tomatoes that yeah. a, a high class person that i want to take yeah mm. where do they go after the market so either someone will if uh, if you're in the agri circular business that we're talking about, mm -hmm. someone will get them and maybe make ketchup out of them and mm -hmm. sell the ketchup. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really want to promote. We don't want to promote any wastage anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, you see, we have pineapples every season coming up, or even mangoes. And you find them smashed everywhere, or even milk in Barra. Yeah. Um, when my father gets the milk and maybe fresh dairy is not taking it up anymore, or maybe it's a rainy season and there's milk flooding everywhere. Mm -hmm. Trust me, they pour milk on the road or even just give it to cows to drink it again. Yeah. So there's so much wastage going on, yet we have areas in Uganda where people don't even have food at all. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking there's no balance, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so what can we do to change that cycle in our communities, in our society, in Uganda as a whole? Yeah. And, and we are the food basket of the, of the East African whole market, yeah? So um, this partnership we have is to make sure that everything that is in the food value chain mm -hmm. is actually being turned around for our good yeah, yeah. it's not no wastage zero wastage uh, and this is trying to get like wh what super technologies are around yeah mm. so the partners that we have are, su are supporting us with that they're giving us food experts in different areas mm -hmm. um uh, giving us some funding uh, to support those entrepreneurs that have come up and said, I'm going to pick up these tomatoes, I'm going to pick up these pineapples and maybe make pineapple jam, but maybe uh, I can only do a small scale for Kampala, yeah. but how can I do it at a large scale and export it? Yeah? yeah. And this is really going to turn around the economy and also um, give people jobs because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we are tired of coming out of school <laughs> and looking for jobs. Yeah, We want to support the government. So there are new, jobs. There are new, oppo yeah. there are new entrepreneurial opportunities in Imagine, Very because much. someone will take care of this additional yes. recycling or, yes, or yes, adding yes. value and mm. processing. Mm. And, and this is a recent initiative that Hive Collab is doing. But yes. more broadly, have you, what, what have you seen in the area of, you know, recently, especially with COVID, a lot of digital technologies have emerged mm. and, and especially focusing on um, the agriculture space, at trying to add value, whether it's extension and mm. things like that. So within the Hive Collab family of entrepreneurs, what, yes. what are some of those that come to mind? So we have uh, some of the uh, some entrepreneurs that have been our babies and have actually, we, we, we really pride ourselves in their growth, yeah? Uh, having been part of our journey, one of them is in Sibuko, who you've actually funded recently, yeah, yeah. Uh, a million dollars. And we're really so proud of them and you guys for actually picking them up. Uh, they have been. This they recently place. also got uh, impact investment. Yeah. I think mm. from Scandinavian yes. investors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So um, and then the other is Agro Supply, who yeah. are also being uh, been picked up by UNDP. Mm. So we really want to thank you <laughs> on that regard. Uh, but some of the things that they have done that mm. we really pride ourselves in is um, especially on climate change, mm -hmm. but also uh, trying to go in the agriculture space is. Um, Making sure, you see, we have a number of VS, VSLs, yeah, in the villages yeah. uh, that are actually managed and governed by women, yeah, and 60% mm -hmm. of them have actually excelled yeah. because they have leadership of women, yeah, because women have better saving culture, yeah. Now, True those enough. VSLs, <laughs> and, and they pay their debts very well and in So, time. these are the village savings and yes, loans associations. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, how, how, what role does technology add to these women groups. So mm. one of the things that the startups that we work with have done through that is uh, that they get the technology mm -hmm. that helps them understand that um, I can use, um, how do they call it? I can use a better variety of crops. Okay. Yes. So agro-advisory yeah. services. Yes. And mm. then also we have women who cannot actually read or write. Yes. Uh -huh. So. Even when you send them a text, they will not even understand that, ah, this text was maybe from mm. MTN or it was from ENDP yeah, or, yeah, or maybe yeah, AgroSupply. Mm, mm. So the, the, the artificial intelligence system that they have deployed, mm -hmm. and actually some are also in the process of being deployed, yeah. is that it can read actually the message for you and in your language. So think about it that maybe I'm a Choli, and then it's going to read that message and tell me, uh, Alan, um, your, 
Um, How is your child? I know, I was waiting to hear her say. No, 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 I can't say it. And it will say, uh, and then, uh, season Yamate, Nezak Hindukati. Eh? Okay. That's in Runyanko. You're telling yeah. me mm. that the season of the male. So essentially, it's overcoming the literacy barrier. Yeah. Right? Yes, yeah. Uh, yes. And also, one thing we've realized from statistics is that from the research that we've done, is that out of a uh, hundred thousand uh, maybe messages sent mm -hmm, out to mm -hmm. all these uh, suppliers, yeah. only a, maybe a thousand of them will actually read the message. Yeah, so yeah. just to make sure that no message is being lost, yeah, no yeah. information gap is, is being realized, y y this message so, will be automatically read to me. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in the kitchen, maybe cooking, it will tell me and I'll be alerted. Yeah. And the I other major thing, yes, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. is uh, on, 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 uh, on the climate is that we, we want to make sure that our farmers have insurance, okay. yes? Mm -hmm. So we, um, AgroSupply has come up with this system where it will um, come measure your land and then it will tell you uh, by the virtue of the distance of your land, this is how much um, insurance you can take up and this yeah. is how you're going to pay it. So and crop yeah. insurance against like drought. Yes, and, yes, and, yes, know, and compensation. An, an, mm. So that's interesting because it helps them to de-risk. Eh? Yes. Uh, at least, of course, we know that the compensation, the payout, will, may not be as high as the yield potential, yes, but it's yes. something that can, for example, cushion. Eh? <laughs> but, but that raises a question I had for Barbara, which is around, what, from what I hear, indeed technology is helping yeah. women either on the finance side and also on the, on the climate resilience yes. component. But a lot of these technologies are not don't have women behind <laughs> behind them. So as women in technology, Uganda, what are you doing to advance women led? Because we know this country is very rich with um, women technologists who can develop solutions even more intuitive because they are themselves women. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know about uh, women <clears throat> women in technology, Uganda and some of the work that you're doing to balance that. Let me use Alan's yeah. language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ronald. Um, one of the things that we are doing is understanding women and where the challenges are. I think before you bring anything onto the table, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. to first understand why. Because most times we sit in offices in Kampala and wherever, we're like, women are not growing better varieties of, of crops. Mm. We need to develop an app <laughs> and, and ensure that they get this information. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go down into that village with your background information of they don't have this, mm -hmm. I need to provide this probably. Yeah. But let me first go and understand what are the real challenges mm -hmm. in there? Why are these women not doing this? Because yeah. yeah. when you go deeper and do a bit of research, you'll understand that the challenge is, yes, Part of it is the access to the information, but mm -hmm. there's so many other challenges, especially social mm -hmm. challenges that women face that may limit them, even if you give them the brand new even phone the, and you the, provide the, the internet <laughs> and whatever it is, and maybe they won't use it. Yeah, so yeah. understanding women and co-creating yes. a solution. Mm -hmm. it, see, Ronald, if you come to me and tell me, you know what, your problem is this. This is the solution you need. I might use it, but if you come to me and ask me, it's your challenge. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, this is the challenge that yeah, you're facing. Yeah. You ask me, how do you think we can solve it? Uh -huh. Well, I've had this, this technology thing, but I don't even know how to use it. I don't even think I can use it. What would make you use it? Mm -hmm. Well, X, Y, and Z would have to be in place for yeah, you to be able yeah, to use it. Yeah. Can we build this together? Do you think we can use it? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how to build. If you build, maybe I'll test. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do the building and let's do the testing. But it's also important that it's woman to woman coming uh -huh. together. Yeah. Because somehow if I'm a woman speaking to a woman or a woman is speaking to me, there's that sense in you that this one understands that when I say, you know what, it's not just about this technology, it's also yeah. this man, that I'll instantly click and be like, huh, is he refusing you to, yes, you've understood it. So it's, I can afford the phone, but I can't buy it because I know he'll either yeah. take it or he'll yeah. think this. So, and even in there, the, the solutions are with the women. So yeah. going deep down in there to understand, understand that is the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And also building their capacity. Mm -hmm. Most times when we are doing these innovation uh, calls and challenges and all, there is no specific emphasis put on we are looking for women innovators. Yeah. Yeah. And so you realize that when you look at a pool, for example, we, we just did a call recently and we got over 100 applications and we were saying, okay, how many women actually applied? Yeah. And there were very few women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
there's need for deliberate yeah. deliberate mm -hmm. actions that mm -hmm. specifically target women. Yeah. Some of the challenges also look at finance. When you look at women's access to finance, yeah. Yeah. Uh, banks, we've worked with banks in the past uh, when we are supporting uh, women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. even just in normal agriculture that has nothing to do with technology and people are saying, huh, they have to first be in a group. But if I've started my business, mm -hmm and maybe we are just two people, and you're saying we have to be in a group of 10. As a woman entrepreneur with my partner, we're wondering, how are these other eight people going to help? So you find situations so where people advice. partner mm -hmm. up yeah. just for the sake of partner. guessing yeah. finance, yeah. but then it's not going to build the business. So yeah. understanding and creating specific incentives mm -hmm. that allow women to innovate, mm -hmm. giving them the tools, the resources, and the liberty to be able to create. But we also need to engage men. That is something else that we have learned. If you want women to adopt technology for climate change, involve the men. Yeah. They need to, when you were speaking at the beginning, you said um, Uganda has over 80% mm -hmm. in agriculture, and then you said majority of those are women. They're also men. Now those women have men in their lives. Mm -hmm. When you're engaging a woman and telling her, okay, now we're going to do a digital literacy training, we want you, there's this amazing app by AgroSupply, it's going to help you tell you what variety of crop to use for this uh, that will be drought resistant, yeah. or to tell you that now the rains are going to change, it won't come in March, it will now come in Jan, so you need, so those changes, yeah. you need to involve the husband, so that he also understands the value of how this is going to help the family as a whole to grow. But also for the woman to understand what challenges might come with this technology so that she can mitigate them before they even happen. You need to still be submissive to your husband. You know your husband better than anyone. What are those things that will make him not want you to have a phone? And how do you tweak it so that he will be excited about you having a phone. So we need to do a lot of um, sensitization, both yeah. men and women, yeah. and also engage women in the decision making, even right at policy level. Let not men just sit <laughs> and make decisions for us. No, we, we want to be, be at that table. Way. Bring that farmer woman and ask her what her challenges are yeah. before you bring her a new brand of maize, which will be very good for her. Yeah. But she needs to understand the stem of it and why this is happening and how it helps her and her future. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of like very key for the beginning to have like the solutions designed with the challenges. Otherwise then yes. um, they fail to take off. Mm -hmm. But I, I also wanted to ask about uh, in addition to like the solutions being developed with the, you know, the fancy word is human centered design. Yes. I'm avoiding it, yes. but the, with the idea, with the community that is being designed for, and there are quite a number of solutions that can be designed outside of this environment, and then they don't speak to that need. I'm also curious on the developer side, in addition to finance, what do you think will trigger more visibility for women technologists who have these solutions? And as you mentioned, because just by their agenda and interaction with their clients, they have developed more intuitive, client-centered products. Yeah. So finance is one, as you've touched on. What else do you think needs to be done to see these technologies emerge? Visibility, yeah. deliberately creating the visibility for the businesses. Yeah. So let's say Ministry of Agriculture is doing something. Specifically call out those women um, innovators to come and talk about what they are doing. Mm -hmm. If it's TV airtime, give it to them. If it's that visibility is one of the key things that are missing. It's not that women innovators are not there. They yeah. are. Yeah. But because of community and society and social backgrounds and how we have been brought up as women, we are not naturally out there to put ourselves in the limelight. So we need to have that kind so of this blanket <laughs> these blanket calls need to sometimes be a bit more specific. Yes. Yes. And they need to tap like for example yes. there is an association like as you've mentioned, women in technology uh, in Uganda and, and such an, uh, uh, a body could be tapped into to like expose yeah. more, you know. Because it's one thing to announce, but accessing is quite another. Yeah. Yes. yes, because gender inequality is still a huge, huge challenge for us, despite the many mm -hmm. um, talks and that efforts that we are putting in as, a, as the world, actually, mm -hmm. to this. It's still a big problem. So we need to still give it its due um, 
importance when we are making these calls. Yeah, Say yeah. specifically, 40%, 50% is mm -hmm. going to women innovators. Yeah, yeah. If you put out a call and you get 1,000... So intentional Be about, intentional about, about those calls. Like because because and even the doing, support yeah. that is coming out. Yeah. Be intentional about it and say, mm -hmm. we are looking for women innovators who are doing this exactly. and this is what we want to do. We've yeah. understood your challenges. Mm -hmm. One of them is access to finance. Yeah. We want to give you the finance. But yeah. we don't want to just give you the finance. We also want to give you the capacity to be able to build. To build so if yeah. the capacity is an actual technical skill, i.e. developing or cloud storage or provide you know, it. all those different give them the tools yeah. that they need to yeah. be able to innovate. And, and in, a, in a sense it goes back to what you mentioned that in, as the technologists are designing around the challenges the woman is facing, mm. the development community and the different stakeholders also need to design programs for women technologists to emerge around the challenges yes. they are facing. Yes. So yes. there are layers of the target population, the farmers, the female mm. yes. farmers, mm. but also the developers the developer who also have their unique you know, yeah. challenges, challenges and issues. And yeah. And so even building on a network really, yeah. creating a network of women innovators, women um, in business, so that they can share with each other. Sometimes you, you're building a business and you're thinking, that business is owned by a guy. That one is owned by a guy. What am I doing? Yeah. But if you're in a community where women are building, there's that mm -hmm. kind of yes. uplift Synergy that you that get yes. that helps you know, yeah, mm -hmm. I can actually do this. Yeah. And not just in Uganda, yeah. but even out there um, in um, either the first world or whichever, mm -hmm. where women have innovated and are building and you create that kind of knowledge exchange between mm -hmm. the women, there is that fire that is built that would help and us even, propel. You know, platforms, to, you yes. know, things like sharing servers, you yes. know, some of those things that can alleviate that. And I'm cognizant that we are um, left with only one uh, last round of questions, and actually it's just under five minutes. But I wanted to ask, use this chance to ask if you could pick a gap. So maybe, let me start with Juliet Grace. So currently in the work, you know, in the amazing work that AIC is doing around, you know, youth climate response, what do you see as uh, maybe one major gap, which if addressed can help, you know, your organization scale in the 19 countries that you're looking after? Uh, so Barbara mentioned the issue of finance and climate finance is really one we are still grappling with, but then also not just the access to the money, mm -hmm. but then also when you get the money, what do you do okay. with the money? So there is you giving me the money, yes, well done, thank you, you. <laughs> yeah. but how do I actually allocate Operationalize that, yes. yeah. Because yeah. as young people, we easily get excited, yes, the yeah. money is here, then I'll get my work done, mm -hmm. and then I need that latest iPhone, I need that car, <laughs> I need all these things that will make me stand out amongst my peers, but then yeah. also with this thing that I'm so passionate about. So, if so it's a combination of like funding, but also building. capacity building. Yes, so if yeah. you're giving me that money, also, can you direct so me? Support me in a certain yeah. way. So that this money, I don't have to always come back to yeah. you. So I think I've, I've heard that before. Where that's what we do. Some that have said that, yeah. okay, thanks, we got the money, but you left us. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so this journey, walking the journey with you. Walking that journey okay. with and so that by the end of the day, it's not a thing of, yes, you've given me the money, yeah. but has the money actually done the work that is sure. going for? Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, I know you mentioned about food, waste, and also mm -hmm. COVID-19 hits. Uh, cut tracks are stopped from going to the market. So as a farmer, I have a lot of food yeah. that's ready to go to the market, but I have no way of taking it to the market. So this food gets spoiled. Yeah. So all these challenges were faced by farmers. But because of the digital age, I'm happy to say that Many farmers were able to access markets, even from the confines of their mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. Many of us were able to sit back home and order for groceries, and all these are innovations that are being done yeah. by, and many a times we don't actually recognize, but actually by women as well. Yeah. I think for me, one of the platforms that I appreciate, especially in the agriculture space, is Easier Greek. Yeah. Women led initiative, yeah. but then they are working with farmers at home. Mm. Access to finance, access to markets, inputs. access to actually agriculture inputs uh, at the same time, but then also that knowledge gap that needs to be yeah. addressed. And again, my permission, we shouldn't forget that name. It's my husband who's land title, the names are, the land title are in his names. In as much as I till this land day in, day out. So that partnership. That partnership between our 
fathers and their husbands and brothers is uh -huh. very essential to the work that yeah. we do yeah. in whatever spaces we are in. Yeah, and I think that's great to touch on the aspect of, okay, there's the investment, there's the journey of capacity building, yeah. but then there are all these different apps that are also plugging in, and some of them, as you mentioned, are women in play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the Hive Collab component, what do you see as, you know, focus areas for the future to see more inclusive? You know, Barbara <laughs> has mentioned that there's this gap, you know, uh, visibility and, you know, what else, you know, if you could pick one, um, gap that you see may be interesting for yourselves or other stakeholders to pursue? I think really, I'll go back to what she said, it's just the information gap. Yeah. We have, literacy. we have, yeah, this uh, digital literacy needs to happen here. Yeah? So we have people that, we have all these amazing apps, let me tell you, you just go to the place and there's like everything going on, or even someone will tell you, do you know this and you have no clue yet, mm -hmm. that's the actual the media thing you really needed, yeah? So no one has a clue. Even let's say in Hive Collab, you yeah. find that we have many developers going on. Maybe this one is in this area. And this the one exposure. Yes. So maybe more, as we've mentioned, maybe more yeah. visibility yeah. and and that that's deliberate something, visibility. That's something yes. I also want to pause for um, Barbara. As one of the final questions being that, as one of the f women that have made a name in this space in the mm. technology space in the country. Um, you must be feeling the burden of having more <laughs> of yourselves, <laughs> of yourself in this space. So what, uh, again, wh 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 what do you think will be some of your priority areas in the coming, you know, months? Uh, Getting on two tables uh -huh. where decisions are being made. Yeah. So starting at national level when yeah. policies are being made, yeah. are they pro-women? Yeah. Um, policies that are being made so let's have women on the table yeah, so yeah. for us working with um UND people who have the power to say what we are feeling on our minds mm -hmm. so you see influence policy. yes to influence policy if you yeah. just walk in you may not get lis uh, listened to but if you walk in with other people yeah because policy has this opportunity that you know it can unlock yeah so advocating yeah. so making sure it's inclusive whatever is being done yeah. that women are at the center of it yeah. have women on those tables for me yeah. i think is one of the most important things because yeah. if we are telling our challenges then yeah. the solutions will come much faster than if someone else is solving yeah. for us and i think you say that because you've seen the role policy can play in terms of uh, d uh, being Making a barrier changes, or yes. being a, a, yes a, a just look at mobile money for example yeah. when that policy was made and how they realized oh yeah. wait we made a mistake and also yeah. Yeah. Uh, getting women but also getting more women into technical development more yeah. women Develop in stem in tech, as yeah. developers as scientists as yeah. mathematicians who can uh, do analysis and be able to tell that okay given the prediction of what this what, of mm -hmm. how the climate has been this mm -hmm. is what we see coming so that women are more informed so of what building can, more yes. stem skills and, yes stem skilling yeah. is very important also yes and unfortunately this conversation has just started but i know that we'll have another chance to expand further on it um, but i want to thank very much juliet grace luede uh, from african youth initiative on climate change uh, I want to thank Barbara Birungi Mutavazi from Women in Technology Uganda and Alina Arinaitre from Hive Collab. Thank you very much for this insightful conversation. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you for having us.